and the readings will now be given by Florence from Georgia. Ah. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Ephesians I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Joshua. Now Jericho was straightly set up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. That shalt thou do six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Acts. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealots, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Philippians If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. 
Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Colossians. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, with the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Romans. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. John, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast Sent me. Matthew. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. I am cheered and blessed when beholding Christian healing, unity among brethren, and love to God and man. This is my crown of rejoicing, for it demonstrates Christian science. What can fathom infinity? How shall we declare him till in the language of the apostle we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? Unity is spiritual cooperation, heart to heart, the bond of blessedness. Unity is the essential nature of Christian science. Its principle is one, and to demonstrate the divine one demands oneness of thought and action. My students, three picture stories from the Bible present themselves to my thought. Three of those pictures from which we learn without study. The first is that of Joshua and his band before the walls of Jericho. They went seven times around these walls, the seven times corresponding to the seven days of creation. The six days are to find out the nothingness of matter. The seventh is the day of rest, when it is found that evil is not and good is all. We today in this classroom are enough to convert the world if we are of one mind, and for then the whole world will feel the influence of this mind, as when the earth was without form, and mind spake, and form appeared. The third picture lesson is from Revelation, where at the opening of the seals, 
one of the angels presented himself with balances to weigh the thoughts and actions of men, not angels with wings, but messengers of pure and holy thoughts that say, Be thou hurt not the holy things of truth. There are not two, mind and matter. We must get rid of that notion. As we commonly think, we imagine all is well if we cast something into the scale of mind. But we must realize that mind is not put into the scales with matter. Then only are we working on the side, on the one side, and in science. A great sanity, a mighty something buried in the depth of the unseen, has wrought a resurrection among you and has leaped into living love. What is this something? The phoenix fire, the pillar by day, kindling, guiding, and guarding your way. It is unity, the bond of perfectness a thousand-fold expansion that will engirdle the world, unity which unfolds the thought most within us into the greater and better, the sum of all reality and good. This unity is reserved wisdom and strength. It builds upon the rock against which envy, enmity, or malice beat in vain. Man lives, moves, and has his being in God, love. Then man must live, he cannot die. And love must necessarily promote and pervade all his success. Of two things, fate cannot rob us. Namely, of choosing the best and of helping others thus to choose. My beloved students, I call you mine, for all is thine and mine. What God gives, elucidates, armors, and tests in his service is ours, and we are his. You have convened only to convince yourself of this grand verity, namely the unity in Christian science. Cherish steadfastly this fact. Adhere to the teachings of the Bible, science and health, and our manual. and You will obey the law and gospel. Have one God and you will have no devil. Keep yourselves busy with divine love. Then you will be toilers like the bee, always distributing sweet things, which if bitter to sense, will be solitary as soul. But you will not be like the spider which weaves webs that ensnare. Rest assured that the good you do unto others, you do to yourselves as well. And the wrong you may commit must, will rebound upon you. The entire purpose of true education is to make one not only know the truth, but live it. To make one enjoy doing right. Make one not work in the sunshine and run away in the storm. But work midst clouds of wrong, injustice, envy, hate, and wait on God, the strong deliverer who will reward righteousness and punish iniquity. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. The question is often asked, why is there so much dissension among mental practitioners? We answer, because we do not practice in strict accordance with the teaching of Christian science mind healing. If they did, there would be unity of action. Being like the disciples of old, with one accord in one place, they would receive a spiritual influx, impossible under other conditions, and so would recognize and resist the animal magnetism by which they are being deceived and misled. 
For students to work together is not always to cooperate, but sometimes to co-elbow. Each student should seek alone the guidance of our common father, even the divine principle which he claims to demonstrate. And especially should he prove his faith by works, ethically, physically, and spiritually. Remember that the first and last lesson of Christian science is love, perfect love, and love made perfect through the cross. I once thought that in unity was human strength, but have grown to know that human strength is weakness, that unity is divine might given to human power, peace.